the whole idea of space travel seems so incredibly cool. I mean, who hasn't wondered what it would actually be like to go for a stroll on the moon? However, there are some facts that might make you reconsider your perspective. From the dreadful repercussions of losing your total body orientation to the failure of some of our best technology to adapt effectively to outer space, you may have yet to anticipate many aspects of space travel. The universe could rip itself apart. By now, we all know that the universe is expanding. Although its nature is still a mystery, scientists agree that dark energy might be behind it all. Now, here comes the scary part. Several scientists believe the universe's expansion could eventually tear the universe apart, just like the Enterprise at Warp Factor 9. One of the most frightening aspects of this idea is that while most end-of-the-world scenarios occur after the human race is long gone and nothing is left, the Big Rip, that's a catchy name for the end of the world, is scheduled to take place in about 16 billion years when planets and possibly life could still exist. This universe-wide catastrophe could either burn everything and everyone alive, rip them apart, or feed them to the celestial space squids that dwell amongst the universe. I mean, who knows, they could be there, but it will almost certainly be an infinitely more grisly demise than anyone expected. Moon dust will kill you. Just about everything in outer space will kill you. Yet, one of NASA's biggest headaches isn't a lack of oxygen or a punctured suit, but moon dust. The particles cling to everything, including suits, and a good stomp of the feet would have sufficed if we were looking at the dust here on Earth. But moon dust can kill you. In 2018, scientists confirmed that fact. Unlike the powdery dust down here, the lunar particles are razor-sharp, never degrade, and consist mostly of meteorite fragments. When scientists exposed the lunar dust to human cells in their laboratories, it sliced and demolished nearly 90% of lung and brain tissue in less than 24 hours. The cells that survived suffered such extensive DNA damage that they were at risk of developing malignancies and neurodegenerative disorders. The Gigantic Rogue Black Hole When it comes to things that really shouldn't go rogue, a black hole is probably right there at the top. A black hole is an area of space with a gravitational field so strong that even light can't escape it. It literally gobbles up everything that dares to wander in its gravitational fields. So, they should be avoided, to put it mildly. It becomes a problem, however, if one of them decides stationary life is not for them. Like everything else in our galaxy, black holes can find their own movement trajectories, and if that happens, they move at breakneck speed, devouring everything in their path, which is exactly what's going on in the Milky Way, you know, where we live. A black hole the size of Jupiter is currently tearing its way through the galaxy, and while we are safe from it at the moment, it's going to be a different situation in the Earth's distant future. What would happen to your body without a suit? I know we've all wondered this, so let's put it out there. What actually happens to your body if you ever get sucked out of your spaceship without wearing your spacesuit? Well, all the oxygen in your blood will deplete in about 15 seconds if you don't hold your breath. That is, if you do, the remaining air in your lungs will force them to expand, rupturing them and allowing air into your indispensable circulatory system. The first thing you want to do if you trip out of the airlock like a badly dressed sci-fi henchman is to exhale. I know that seems absurd, but it's not like diving underwater. Speaking of water, given the lack of pressure, the water in your tissues will begin to vaporize. After about 10 seconds, you'll also experience a burning sensation on your tongue, sunburn, skin, and symptoms of decompression sickness. You won't freeze right away, and you won't decompose either. So, we could leave you up there or reel you back in. Either way, being a floating icicle in space doesn't sound like the worst way to go. Extended space travel can change your DNA. NASA has been analyzing the effects of long-term space travel on our DNA by studying identical twins astronauts Mark and Scott Kelly. Scott went to the International Space Station, where he spent nearly a year without gravity. And while Scott was in space, Mark carried out identical trials here on Earth, allowing the 84 scientists involved in the study to see how much microgravity conditions changed the human body. 
Unsurprisingly, since our bodies were created to withstand Earth's gravity and conditions, Scott went through significant changes that included reduced body mass, changes to his eye shape, he developed an overactive immune system, and he experienced changes to his chromosomes. Fortunately, once Scott returned to Earth, his body recovered more or less. Stars can come back from the dead. If the Lion King taught me anything, it's that every living thing has to die at some point in the great big circle of life. Now, you might recall that the death of a star is one of the most intriguing spectacles in the macrocosm. Every star visible in the heavens died long ago or will cease to exist in the years to come. That is the natural order in the world as we know it, unless it isn't. Scientists recently discovered that some stars die and then miraculously come back to life, and nobody knows why. In fact, these zombie stars, as we've come to know and love them, actually seem to have a revitalized sense of vigor. Space can make you nearsighted. As if changes to your DNA and immune system weren't enough, an unidentified disorder has been affecting astronauts' eyesight on the International Space Station, leading to untreatable nearsightedness that lasts months when they return to Earth. The situation is so serious that more than half of astronauts have reported that their eyesight deteriorated after spending time in orbit. NASA believes that the condition, VIIP, or Visual Impairment Intracranial Pressure Syndrome, is triggered by the lack of gravity in space. The coldest place in the universe. The universe is a cold place, and while we know it's cold, nobody is sure just how cold it can get. According to scientists, the Boomerang Nebula, the giant mass of gas and dust, is the absolute coldest place in our universe. In fact, it's so cold, dash 445.78.7 degree F on average, that scientists have been trying to figure out what happened to it for a very long time. And recently, they discovered a plausible reason for it. They believe the nebula was expelled after two stars collided, causing the matter of one star to be discharged as a cold burst. While it's still too far away to be dangerous, it's the one place we should probably all agree not to visit if we ever figure out interstellar travel. If you fell into a black hole, you would be strung out into spaghetti. Well, it's never been put to. Discovered the first enormous sound waves of a supermassive black hole radiating through the Perseus Galaxy Cluster in 2003. The H's pitch was the deepest we've ever recorded in the universe, a cosmic B flat flat 57 octaves below middle C, more than one quadrillion times below the audible. A lot of scientists wondered if such a sound could be manufactured and used as a weapon and found the answer. If a 1100 dB sound could be produced, the intense waves would be powerful enough to rip space-time apart and create a quantum singularity. In other words, it can potentially make a new black hole, a truly sobering thought. However, none of this knowledge is actually troubling because it's all impossible. No medium is pressurized enough to produce a 1,100 decibel sound, and no technology comes close to providing the required amount of energy. The most advanced civilization, however, could create this ultimate weapon by collecting the incredibly dense fluids of an alien atmosphere and using the energy of an entire galaxy. Theoretically, the Mars dust devils are up to 10 times taller and 50 times wider than our pitiful terrestrial counterparts. So they constantly threaten our pricey probes and rovers that we invariably send up there. Apart from all the issues they cause, they've also provided the stroke of luck at least once. In 2005, one blew excessive dust and debris off the Spirit rover solar panels, improving the rover's power and allowing it to continue its mission. If you've enjoyed that fact, you'll want to stick around for the final five items on today's list because I've never heard any of them before, so chances are neither have you. When Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong took their first steps on the moon, they quickly realized something unexpected. The moon's shadows were far darker than those here on Earth. Everything that didn't get direct sunlight was pitch black, so much so that they couldn't even see their feet if they stepped into a shadow. Although they soon discovered they could adapt to the shadows, the persistent contrast between sunny and shaded areas remained challenging. The moon's shadows caused havoc during several Apollo missions. While some astronauts found it impossible to perform maintenance tasks since their own hands obscured what they were doing, others thought they were landing in a cavern because of the deep shadows. 
Solar flares. A solar flare is nothing more than an enormous eruption of radiation from the sun triggered by the release of magnetic energy. I know it doesn't sound like a big thing until you realize that we nearly missed a solar superstorm in 2012, one that could have had enormous repercussions if it hit us. Just one week earlier, it would have caused widespread damage 20 times worse than Hurricane Katrina, which would have taken at least 20 years to repair. So why don't we know about it? Well, since we missed it, NASA thought it best not to report it. Solar flares pose an enormous risk to our way of living. In fact, in a 2017 study, it suggests a solid chance of a giant solar flare hitting us within the next century, causing an estimated 10 trillion in damage. The odds of an extinction-level event are 1 in 1,000, which should make you sit up straighter. And even though these odds may not sound that scary, the chances of a massive solar flare disrupting our electrical and technological capabilities are 1 in 8. Asteroids In March 2021, an asteroid passed within 1.25 million miles or 2 million kilometers of Earth, roughly five times the distance between us and the moon, called the Lunar Distance or LD, asteroid 2001 FO32 at roughly three times the height of the Eiffel Tower, is bigger than 97% of the previously identified asteroids in our solar system. If an asteroid that size collided with Earth, it would be a global disaster. And if that isn't enough to scare you, asteroid 2001 FO32 has been designated by NASA as an Apollo-class asteroid, since its trajectory crosses or intersects Earth's orbit on a comparable plane twice during its own 810-day orbit, increasing the threat of an impact every two years. Asteroid 2001 FO32 is classified as a potentially hazardous asteroid, PHA, by NASA, which considers Apollo-class asteroids to be the most dangerous. And despite all of the info that I just gave you, Asteroid 2001 FO32 isn't the only object to have passed Earth in the last five years, or even the closest. Several came closer to Earth than the moon, and at least three big ones were only discovered after they passed us. Carbon Dioxide Poisoning on the ISS the ISS, or International Space Station, has a higher-than-average carbon dioxide concentration that comes with a massive amount of unfavorable side effects. Sleeping difficulties, headaches, and irritation are very common. In fact, nearly all astronauts endure headaches at the start of their missions. Unlike on Earth, where carbon dioxide leaving the body disperses into the air, CO2 exhaled by astronauts forms a cloud above their heads. Even though fans disperse the CO2 throughout the station, the levels cannot be brought down to acceptable levels. Chronic exposure to high CO2 levels can lead to memory problems, hearing disorders, nausea, sleep disorders, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and vomiting. So it might be a good idea to hold off on traveling to Mars until we at least get that bit sorted out. Solar Eclipses the conditions in the path of totality may shift quickly during a total solar eclipse. Temperatures drop, and the immediate area goes dark, often leading to changes in wind direction. What many of us don't realize while we stare in awe at the sun is that animals often become very confused during solar eclipses, not only larger animals and mammals, but all living things, even microbes. We are yet to do proper testing on the effects of eclipses on plant and animal life in space. Another interesting fact is that eclipses disrupt certain radio wave frequencies, and we're still trying to figure out why. Scientists suspect it has to do with how the sun interacts with the planet's ionosphere, which has been shown to change in the wake of solar flares and storms. There's still a lot we have to figure out. Communication delays. Phone calls on Earth are almost instantaneous. When we travel deeper into space, it turns into a different ball game. A long-distance call from the U.S. can travel around 18,000 miles, but if we're thinking about space communication, those signals have to travel millions of miles. For example, a one-way radio signal to Mars will take anywhere from 4.3 to 21 minutes, so getting a message out and receiving a reply can take up to 42 minutes. It's also possible for the sun to interfere with communication between Earth and Mars to the point that astronauts become cut off from Earth for weeks at a time. 
In addition to preventing astronauts from interacting socially, it will also prevent them from getting live support when they encounter technical difficulties. And you thought technical support was horrendous. Space Adaptation Syndrome Can you imagine what it would feel like if your brain couldn't figure out where up and down was? Space sickness, also known as space adaptation syndrome, happens when an astronaut's body struggles to adapt without the Earth's gravitational pull. It's been said to be a lot like motion sickness, but it comes with an added dash of disorientation, intense headache, serious discomfort, and occasionally nausea and vertigo. And trust me, throwing up in space is so much worse than you can imagine. It's not the lack of gravity that makes people sick, but rather the abrupt change in gravitational force. 